Hello everyone, welcome you all to Global Online University. And here we are with our NTA UGC net paper one preparation for the upcoming examination that is on November 2021. And today is the day four of the revision action plan, wherein we are taking every day one one unit we have completed with teaching aptitude, we have completed with uh, communication, we have completed with research aptitude. And today I have taken the unit that is information and communication technology. In case if you are not able to find the videos, you can just check the description box. All the videos are given in the description box, which will help you to ensure that you are concentrating well on your revision along with your MCQs also. So let's start the session for the day with respect to information and communication technology. Before we go uh, ahead with the revision class, this is a very important announcement, a very, very important announcement with res respect to a day revision PDF for your paper one for your upcoming examination. Now, this particular PDF will not only consist of 2000 plus MCQs, but these MCQs will be a part of your latest current affairs, your previous year question papers and the most expected MCQs uh, for your examination. Now, in this, in one uh, particular document itself, you'll get everything. So you don't have to definitely jump from here to there. If you are really interested and if you feel that, yes, you know, you have to do it and you have to crack your examination. So in order to gain the assess for the same, you can please get in touch with the given WhatsApp number. The fees for the same is 499. In case if you are looking something for your paper two, uh, with respect to the subjects that is geography, English, economics, management, commerce, Hindi, social work or law, you can get in touch with us. We have paper two material with respect to theory as well as MCQ. So it's not only theory, but MCQs will also give you a good revision for your prospective paper two paper. Now, if you want this PDF of paper two in the form of a theory and MCQs, that is notes, you can again get in touch with the given WhatsApp number where the fees is triple nine rupees. Now, uh, let's start the session for the day. Now, this information technology is sorry, information and communication technology. Again, this unit will be having five questions and the total number of marks will be allotted is 10. So if, for respective question for each question, the marks will be two. Apart from that. First, let's quickly have a glance at the syllabus. So in this uh, information and communication technology, you they will uh, join, they will collaborate the questions either in the form of, you know, classroom, either in the form of communication. But in that, they will definitely put a, a, a topic of uh, ICT. So you should be able to, uh, ICT is in uh, your research also. It is in, in the, it's a part of your communication also. So you should be able to understand the question and read the question correctly and then answer it. So yes, now the topic starts with your general abbreviation and terminology, which I have added in the video so that you can just take a pause and quickly revise those terminology. Basics about the internet, intranet, email, video, uh, audio and video conferencing, certain digital initiatives, which I have listed down, ICT and governance topic. So let's start with the first type uh, topic is uh, types of network. In between, I have added the terminology part. Now this terminologies, you'll be able to just uh, pause the video and you can see that particular terminology so you can revise or you can take the important notes. So first let's start with the type of network. Now the types of networks which are available are LAN, MAN, WAN. Apart from this, there are many, but let's go one by one. So when I talk about LAN, it's nothing but a local area network. Uh, the network in which a computer, that is a computer network, which operates in a very small area. That, it's, that is, it connects the computers to a small geographical area in the form of the offices or the companies or the schools or the any other organization. So it is like the... Uh, you can say it is for a specific area, either it is called as the home network, the office network, the school network, or the institutional network. So that type of network is called as what the local area network. Now, when we uh, talk about metropolitan area network, so it is basically uh, that is called as MAN is a high speed network that covers a large amount of uh, geographical area in the form of what in the form of your uh, uh, like, for example, it is in the form of your metro city or a town. So it is it is set by connecting the local area networks using routers and local telephone exchange lines. Now, here we can take an example of a cable network, uh, TV network. 
We can take an example of telephone services that provides high speed DS lines. And then we have fire stations connected to the city. We have branches of schools which are connected to the city. So it's such type of network where it is used, okay? It will be called as what? It will be called as your uh, man, okay? Now here you please remember that you are, uh, I mean to say, uh, short forms also can, acronyms also can come or your uh, long forms also can come, match the following also can come. So you should be able to read it from all the point and answer the question. Now here there was a specific uh, acronym that is called as DSL. So it is nothing but a digital subscriber line. Now what is it? It is basically a subscriber loop. So it is a family. You can say the families of technology, which is helped, you know, in uh, transmission. So yes, that is all about metropolitan area network. Now let's go to wide area network that is called as WAN, which extends to a very large geographical area. It is not only confined to the offices or the town, but it is definitely, it is set up by telephone lines, fi uh, fiber optic, as well as satellite links. So it is mostly by used by the big organizations or the multinational organizations with respect to their, you know, to communicate with the branches of the customers across the world. Since I'm talking about WAN, so wide, metro, that is MAN, uh, that, uh, the initial which we studied was local. So local, metro, and well as WAN. <coughs> Sorry. So now this is, although it is uh, structurally similar to MAN, but the it is different from man with their respect to range. So man can cover at the most 50 kilometers, whereas van can cover uh, larger than 15 kilometers, okay? Or it can reach to 1,000 kilometers also or more. Now, uh, local area network, as I said, I have just given a diagrammatic representation over here. Then we have done as van, we have done land, uh, sorry, land, van, man, can, that is campus area network. So now let's see what is this uh, uh, details about. So here, basically, uh, when we talk about this, I've just added all the extra or local area network we did, van we did. So all extra parts we I have added so that in case if you if you get time, you can just read it out. Any form of question is expected. Okay, diagrammatic representation also I have showed you. So like, for example, when you talk about man, so the office building, a university campus, a government building, a residential area, Okay, so these these are <coughs> sorry questions which are expected from anywhere. So you should be able to read it very thoroughly or listen to it very carefully. And now we, as we said, we talked about CAM that is campus area network. Um, that is a school getting connected to the library or uh, getting connected to the hostel. So this year you can see what which type of network that is campus area network. Apart from this, we also have something called as SAN that is called as the uh, storage area network, which is specialized high speed uh, network. Okay, it provides um, block level network access to storage. They're typically composed of host switches, storage elements and devices which are interconnected with the help of vari variety of technologies and protocols now yes uh, value added network we have to also van uh, value added network also the concept which you have it's a private hosted service that provides company with security way so it is like a security and uh, way to share and send and share the data with the counterpart party so it is like it stands as in security so it is a it is also called as the turnkey communication to facilitate the electronic data interchange or to provide the network services. <clears throat> so it is nothing but, you know, the connected intelligence, which provides a reliable and view of devices, the consumers own, how consumers use them and how and when and where these devices are connected. So it is like a monitorizing uh, part. So that will, that takes care with the help of what value added network. The next is, is just again a diagrammatic representation. Again, here you can take and halt for two minutes of your video. You can see the whole full forms I have written, how it stands with personal area network, going to the local area network, then coming to metropolitan and then coming to wide area network. So here, what is interested to you is the range. Okay, starting with pan, 100 meters to, sorry, 10 to 100. Land is, it's meters. Land, it is up to five kilometer. Man, as we discussed, five kilometer to 15. And van, which can again go to thousand kilometers. So this is very, very important. Application is device to device or person to person. Land, it is enterprise, the organization. 
man it is you know replacement um, for the miles assist mobile phones and cellular data with the help of van okay so this this talks about what this talks about uh, the networks and you have a detailed information about network okay now uh, we have basics of internet in the form of intra extra and internet so we when we talk about intranet so it is the an intranet creates the connections inside the organization when we talk about extranet it creates the connection uh, beyond uh, sorry connections outside or beyond an organization and when we talk about internet it connects the creates the connection uh, between the computers and the world so intra inside extra outside internet that is connection throughout the world so just keep this in mind this can you know uh, get any form of question uh, again yes little bit of assess i'm just sorry that this image a form it is so in case if it is not clear bit i will read it out for you so don't worry for it so internet the network uh, there is this is a network that is accessible to a person who knows the ip address uh, it is a global communication access through the web and the literacy worldwide that is web, web worldwide web intranet if i'm talking that it, it is at the wider part okay intranet it is a network which is not available to the outside world it is only within we have just say, just saw now like for example a wi-fi been set but it has been protected with a password extranet it is actually an inter internet that is partially accessible to the authorized outside authorized okay it is it is the shared content assessed by groups through which the cross enterprise uh, through which they cross the enterprise boundaries so first comes as your intra then followed by extra and then the internet next we have as computer input and output devices there are a lot of questions on this you know uh, sort out with our input and output devices now please remember one thing very well when you are doing this particular topic uh, some students are scared of ICT because they are not from this background. Uh, so just remember one thing in NTA, UGC NTA net examination out of the five questions, no doubt, I'm not talking about all the five questions. Obviously, two questions will be definitely at difficult level. OK, the difficulty level will be very high, but three questions will be very easy. It only needs that you need to read it very concentratedly. Uh, those three, because see, everyone is not from an IT background. Ground. so it is very difficult even that is understood by them but it doesn't mean that the simple questions will be given and you can just anyone can come and crack it no it's not possible the questions will be simple but definitely they will be twisted with a different form of sentences so you should be very clear on what you're reading and how you are putting up your answers for the select for the given question so when I talk about computer devices, which are divided into two, that is input and output. So we, which are the following input devices? Because as in question, they will merge up and give you the devices and you are supposed to write or you are supposed to sort out, okay? So input devices, when we talk about it is mouse, it is keyboard, it is webcam, touch screen, it is called joystick, or it is, you can call it as uh, microphones, or you can call it as optical pen. So it is like an uh, mouse, okay? Optical, uh, optical pen is nothing, but uh, you can also call it as wireless mouse, okay? Now, uh, when we talk about output devices, it is in the form of monitor, speaker, uh, printer, projector, headset and the plotter. So these, uh, this particular reason to get this slide was, you know, the differentiation between, because they can definitely put a question to you. And these questions are seen many a times in an examination, they merge up and they'll tell you to sort it out. Okay. Now, next is, yes, a very compulsory question on, you know, uh, the memory part. Uh, so, it talks with, uh, sorry, it starts with bits, eight bits into is equal to one byte. One zero two four bytes is equal to one kilobyte. One zero two four kilobyte is equal to one megabyte. One zero two four megabytes as well is equal to one gigabyte. Now here, basically what there are two, three type of questions. First of all, they will tell you to add, uh, arrange the given options in the form of ascending and descending order. Sometimes they give you in the form of, you know, recognition with the help of, um, one uh, one uh, sorry one zero two four gigabytes is what type of terabyte so you need to uh, go it other way around also but you should know the sequence also so lowest starts from nibble that is four bits is a nibble 
So then we have bits, bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes. Till now we used to get the question on terabytes, but now it is even uh, exa, zeta, yota, and brontobytes are you know are a part of your question. So you should ideally geo uh, geopyte. You have to do till here because any form of question will be coming. So each one or a zero is in a binary uh, number is called as a bit. So this four bits form a nibble. And eight bits makes a particular byte, and then the then accordingly the flow goes on. I have told you how to what type of questions are expected and how you are supposed to prepare. Again, this will not right right now. You are listening to my video. You know it very well. Maybe you have done it very well, so it's well and good. But again, this has to be done at the time just before the revision of an examination. See, it is we can we completely understand. To revise everything is not possible. I'm I'm talking about the examination day, but you have to be very smart on what points to be revised. So uh, in ICT, this is the one particular point which you are supposed to revise. Certain that is because this question comes a very factual question. So if you say that one zero two four terabyte is equal to one exabyte is definitely going to be a wrong. No one can help you out. So you last minute. revision this should be a part of your compulsory last minute revision okay then coming to the binary uh, system i mean to say a binary system which has a base of 2 that is 0 and 1 when we talk about decimal it has a base of 10 that is you know uh, uh, starting from the number 0 ending up to 9 when we talk about hexadecimal that is 16 base as 16 so it includes the numbers from 0 to 9 and it includes alphabet a b c d e f now yes uh, you may have a question that ma'am does this type of question comes yes it comes and it has been seen in the university papers in the form of math the following or you know individual questions so you should be able to under identify binary basis 2 decimal basis 10 hexa the basis 16 and octa the basis 8 so you should be able to know it and what comes under them that is if i talk about octa so it is from 0 to the digit 0 to 7 then we have yes now as i said i have some uh, terminologies for you so i definitely i meant to say i have just systematically ensured that it is all you know there in one slide so you can again take a minute for this you can pause the video and def or if you feel at the end you can stop the video at this particular point and ensure that you know you come back to this and just quickly revise certain you know uh terminology so every day 5 5 even if you can finish it off for 5 to 10 it will be good so it will be a revision now uh yes th there was a, there is uh, in 2019 and 20 there is a question seen on data and information which was in one of the old syllabus so let's quickly have a look also at them so what is data data is nothing but the character the number the image the word the text which means little or nothing to a man when the data is processed so you can say it is raw so when it is you know when it is organized it is presented the raw data gets converted into information so the something which is raw is called as data something which is you know it is a a finished product is called as the information when i say finished product it means the final outcome data alone alone sorry cannot be significant at all but yes information is always important by itself data alone can't be having that amount of importance data is based on records and observation whereas information is based on the analysis of the data data is organized and does not depends on information whereas sorry data is unorganized and does not depends on any type of information whereas information is completely organized and always has to depend on data okay so please remember uh, when you're reading it okay sometimes you just scan it but uh, you have to ensure that you know at least one part of the thing you remember very well so that other does not you know you do not take have to take effort so when i say data is raw it means it's understood it is not important it is not organized or it is just based on certain things that is in the form of record and observation but if i say information is uh, you know is a final product or a finished product or a outcome so it is understood that it is definitely it has been planned very well it has been organized it has been you know analysis is done or it is by itself important now 
when we talk about memory yes there are two types of memory that is primary and secondary memory under primary we have ram and rom then we have hard disks floppy cd roms dvds so let's quickly have the details about it so yes and apart from this there is a virtual memory or it is also called as virtual storage is a memory which uh, is a memory management technique that proves idealized abstraction of the storage resources that is actually available on a given machine so which creates a form of you know illusion to users for a very large memory like for example when you talk about computer memory virtual address trans translation in the form of physical address okay catch memory that is with the help of a uh, smallest and fast a uh, secondary memory which is largest and slow so you catch memory is the one which is very small but it is very fast uh secondary memory is the one which is large but it is very slow virtual memory is nothing but the main memory which is you know which is a part uh, which is also called as a virtual storage as a memory management technique of the given uh, machine now again a very important distinguish people again get confused with ram and rom so let's quickly have a look at this also so when we called ram it is nothing but the read uh, write memory okay or random access memory we called and it is rom is also called as read only memory so in ram less data store is stored in uh, when the power is turned off okay whereas in rom the data inside it retains even if the power of the cpu is you know switched off okay switch turn off so when the less data gets stored so you have a chances of data getting loose in ram whereas it it is you know not possible in rom uh, ram is costlier whereas rom is cheaper as compared to ram uh, ram holds a large amount of data compared to rom so the pe memory power you can say Uh, whereas rom has only a can store only a small amount of data it is faster that is i'm talking about ram whereas rom is uh, comparatively slow uh, ram uh, data can be modified easily whereas rom the data can be hardly you know or never it can be modified then coming to yes a part of you know static ram and dynamic ram so uh, there is s ram and d ram so types you have under it so let's have because sometimes one or two questions are also seen uh, let's see now uh, sram uses transistor to store a single bit of data whereas dynamic ram uses a separate capacitor to store the data uh, sram does not need periodic refreshment to you know uh, to maintain the data whereas d dynamic ram reads a periodic refreshment to maintain the data Uh, to maintain the charge in the capacitor of the data so sram structure is complex okay whereas dram structure is simple as compared to sram so if one is complex other is bound to be simple static ram is expensive whereas uh, dynamic ram is less expensive when compared to each other okay so please remember when they come they when, when they are compared so one if it is costlier the other is cheaper as compared to the uh, earlier one so it is not the meaning that it is very cheap it's not like that to the comparison then we have a uh, static ram is faster as i said it is expensive and faster whereas the dynamic ram is slower as well as it is you know less expensive so static ram is used in cache memory which is you know which is of uh, i mean to say which is faster you we have learned now only and uh, dynamic ram is the one which is used in the mem uh, main memory which is slow so you can uh, convert them or you can keep them in that way also in mind which will help you to get it recall then uh, yes we talk about data ca storage capacity in the form of secondary memory so let's see the increase in the storage capacity it starts with floppy disk that is 1.4 mb now i am reading this because in certain uh, questions uh, the mb i mean to say the measurement what is the capacity was also been the question asked okay uh, so we first we have a floppy that is 1.4 cd rom is 700 mb 
uh, DVD is 4.7 GB, that is gigabytes. Blu-ray is 25 to 128 gigabytes, whereas hard disk is in terabytes and magnetic tapes are in the form of, you know, one up to 185 terabytes. Okay, so hard drive, you know, is, has an increased capacity. So the data, data storage devices are very different. They have different capacities and they have the capacity to store large number of data also. Coming to, yes, uh, there is a process in your ICT, it talks about virtual learning. So basically, what is this virtual learning environment, which can be uh, mixed up with your teaching aptitude and they can make a question out of it. So we should understand what is virtual learning. It is an educational technology, which is web-based, uh, that is a form of digital aspect for the course, you know, in order to study the particular course within the educational institution. So they, they present resources, activities, interaction within a course structure and provide you know, uh, uh, them for a different stage of assessment. Like for example, distance learning degree program, professional certification, or you also called as instructional videos, uh, video or you know, uh, audio lectures, books, articles, or other writings and in the form of webinars. So this can be happened. So learning happens in the form of what? In the form of virtual and learning that is in the form of digital uh, space. Then we have next is, yes. Now here I have touched some of the latest, you know, uh, things with respect to ICT. So let's see now it talks the first slide that is the first topic is about the eight computers, supercomputers, which are used by Indian institutional educational institutions for uh, research under what under the national supercomputing mission of government of india so which are they and let's see who who with whom they are possessed by so color boss boson that is cray xc30 which has been possessed by tata institute of fundamental research mumbai hpc that is iit delhi has a supercomputer in their campus called as hpc paramishan is a product of indian institute of technology guwahati Param Kanch, uh, sorry, Kanchan Ganga is the uh, NIT Sikkim campus, or uh, belong to NIT Sikkim campus. Param Shivai is um, IIT, that is Varanasi, uh, been uh, that is, it is by uh, Varanasi, uh, sorry, by IIT Varanasi. Param UR2, the center of development, that is CDAC, or uh, for advanced computing, okay. Uh, Sashastra, that is Cray XC40, is again, uh, you know, uh, I mean to say a computer super education, sorry, super computer education and research center, which is nothing but a facility at Indian Institute of Science. And the last one is Virg Virgo, that is by, which has been held by IIT uh, Madras, okay, IIT Madras. So when we talk about... Um, uh, various universities. So whether it is Param Shiva in the form of uh, Banaras Hindu University or whether it is uh, Virgo in the form of IIT Madras. But these are the eight supercomputers which have been uh, used by our Indian educational institutions under the supervision or under national supercomputing mission of government of India. So obviously this is a proud moment for us also, but you should be aware that where, what and which institutes are using them. Now, Apart from this CDAC, now CDAC, uh, we had, so it is nothing but a center for advanced, uh, sorry, development of advanced computing and Indian Autonomous Scientific Society operating under Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. You can get a question, so be careful. ICERT, that is the Indian, so, uh, Indian Computer Emergency Response Team. It's an office within the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology of Government of India. And it is one of the nodal agency as a mediator to deal with the cyber security threats, strengthen the security related defense for the Indian, Indian internet domain. So Indian internet domain, anything, uh, any security issues will be sorted out by Indian computer emergency response team. Then, as I said, we are doing a little bit of... Uh, uh, latest uh, updates with ICT. So you have those slides for uh, some time now. So one of the private search engine that has been developed in India, that is one of, this is one of the latest news, which was launched in the year 2021 itself on 26th of Jan. And it is a proud mean Indian to occupy, uh, you know, uh, for every Indian to occupy its search engine name QMAMU, that is, which is designed by the Indian researcher under Atmanirbhar Bharat, that is self-independent India. 
Nitish uh, Raj, uh, Rajesh Bhai Danani, a young man from Ahmedabad, Gujarat, ha, is the one who has launched this private search engine uh, dated 26 Jan 2021. Then, uh, Diksha, yes, now as I said, certain few portals uh, with reference to ICT, let's quickly have a look at them. First is Diksha, that is the Digital Infrastructure for Knowledge Sharing. So it is an initiative of National Council for Education, Research and Training, that is NCRT and Ministry of Education, you can see, or Ministry of Human Resource Development, which was launched in the year 2017. So what is the full form? Who has launched it? And uh, sorry, when and who has launched it? Very, very important. It's a platform for school education available for all the states and the central government for grade you know, 1 to 12. The platform can be assessed through a web portal and mobile application. It provides a pool of e-content linked to curriculum. Currently, the platform supports 18 languages and various curriculums across the India. So this, this information is enough, which you have to keep in mind. Now, we, next we have is Mano Darpan, which was uh, scheduled in July 2021. The Ministry of Human Resource Development has uh, launched this initiative with reference to psychological support to the students with reference to the mental and well health and well-being in the challenging time with reference to pandemic. So Manadarpan is uh, actually an initiative under Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, that is a scheme which is launched by uh, Prime Minister Mo M Mr. No Modi ji. The platform is basically for, you know, providing psychological support, psychological, that is, you know, with the help of your psychology, understanding, uh, you know, not only to students, you know, uh, to the, sorry, on, to the students uh, with the help of counseling services, online resource and a helpline. So this is basically uh, like, you know, a counseling uh, to the students uh, not to get distracted or disturbed. Next one, uh, yes, there are certain new initiatives with the respect to state I have written. So Chhattisgarh has uh, an education at your doorstep initiative, which is basically the state government has released. The platform is called Padai uh, Tohare Dor. It means education at your doorstep. So it is to tackle the COVID crisis. Okay, the objective of this particular program is to connect the teachers and students without bring, bringing any... Uh, any uh, type of, you know, uh, discomfort. So there has to be good education content from the comfort of the houses. Okay, that is comfort from the homes. Kerala, that is Kite initiative uh, by Kerala has been effectively used to ensure the continuous learning in the form of, you know, physical distance and social utility into practice. So that uh, the aim is to foster, promote and implement modernization of educational institutions. Then we have the in the state of Madhya Pradesh, there was something which was called as uh, DG uh, Leap, that is Learning and Enhancement Program, which is basically initiative responding to the current crisis by introducing a series of intervention uh, in the form, you know, uh, with this reference to socioeconomic profile of the students uh, studying in the state uh, run over, uh, sorry, state run government schools. And uh, and their limited access to the educational resources, especially during lockdown. So this is basically with, you know, from the viewpoint of pandemic, which can, which started since last year and, you know, and as well as this year. So you may get a question out of it. So in the state of Maharashtra, they have the learning from home package in an ongoing situation that is of closure of school. Uh, with support, you know, with the Department of Health, so, uh, School Education with technical support. So it has developed three phases of learning that is continuity plan to ensure continuity in learning for all children from grade one to 12. Uh, then next one, which we have is, uh, yes, some of the examples where you have the uniform resource locator with the, uh, with its sub uh, uh, labelings as well as some domains that is dot com refers to commercial now this is also was one of the question in one of the previous year so you should know that what domain is used for what so when we talk about dot com commercial dot org for non profit organization dot net that is for network support group or then we have dot uh, gov that is government institutions and dot edu that is specifically educational institutions so when we look at the resource, uh, uniform resource locator, so this is the hypertext transfer protocol, 
we have the subdomain, we have the main domain, and we have the top level domain. So this is divided into, you know, four, four basic divisions, okay? That is the protocol, the subdomain, the domain, main domain, and the top domain. Next, you have, okay, so here we have a top domain that are basically recognized with .com, country code top level domain by .in, generic top level domain by .net, second level top level domain by dreamhouse, and third level is by web, uh, World Wide Web. So this is, that, that is www.dreamhouse.com. So dreamhouse, it means it's a name, the name. Okay, so when we talk about third level domain, so this whole address comes, that is what it is about, how the domains uh, play an important role. Then coming to certain uh, new bodies, that is first is the International Internet Society, sorry, American International Nonprofit Organization, which handles internet education and policy development, which was founded in the year 1992. The mission was to promote open development, evaluation and use of internet for the benefit. Okay, please remember, see in the year 1992 also it was stated, irrespective of what people use it for, but it, the main intention was for the development. Now, when we talk about ICANN, that is the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, is the one which is responsible for coordinating the management of technical elements to DNS to ensure universal resort, resol, uh, sorry, resolvability so that all users of the Internet can find valid address that is from 80, that was, which was uh, established from 18 September 1998. Next is the World Wide Web Consortium, that is V, uh, sorry, W3C. It's an international standard organization, which was founded in the year 1994, which was currently led by Tim Brenner Lee. The consortium has a number of, org sorry, as is made up of member organization with a full-time staff working uh, towards the developing the standard of World Wide Web. So this is association basically formed in order to develop the standard of World Wide Web. Next, when we have, yes, uh, there, was, there are a few basic questions on this, which I have seen. So I've just decided to add that in your revision part so that, you know, even if in case if you miss an MCQ, it will be easier for you. So now the basic structure of human, com the computer was developed by von Neumann, that is architecture, which is also known as Neumann model and Princeton architecture. It's a computer architecture based uh, on 1945 description of computer by mathematicians and physicist John Neumann. English mathematician and inventor Charles Baggage is credited with having convinced the first automatic digital computer. Pascal strangle and probability theory. Okay, that as I said, there was a question based on this. So you can see, you know, the connectivity is not there because who was the basic architecture of computer? That was a question. But uh, these were the names. Charles Baggage is English mathematician and inventor Charles Baggage is credited with automatic first digital computer. Please remember, many students have the basic uh, notion that, you know, a wrong uh, preconceived notion that it is he's the architecture. Pascal is not related to, you know, uh, uh, architecture. He's also the one who has invented the digital calculator. And Gordon Moore is the one who has, you know, uh, said that the number of transistors would fit in the computer chip would be double every year. So this pe uh, personalities you should be able to remember. Then next one is, ha next, uh, yes, we have the uh, topic on, you know, the common threats with respect to, ICT. So let's quickly have a look at them. That is spam. It's nothing but, you know, uh, most of our emails accounts are come with a spam or a junk folder with more than 50% of the mails into the folder, which is nothing but, you know, an annoyance. Uh, I mean, to say, obviously we get annoy, annoyed. So spam mails are not a direct threat. However, they may contain a virus. Okay. Adware is a type of malware software that displays unwanted ads when a user is surfing the internet. So the ad opens direct you to the search to the advertising website and makes marketing type of data uh, with, uh, which, uh, with I mean to say the one who is surfing it, which can be considered as malicious, uh, which, which is not right. Thorjohn is nothing but you leave your computer completely unprotected, you, you, which mean that, which can mean the ha hackers can steal any data from your system. Uh, they are present themselves as in harm, 
Trojans often present themselves as a harmless computer so that the hackers can easily get into your PCs or the system without you being detected. Virus is uh, called as the vital information resource under seas. Please remember how, how is this, the acronym is named as vital information resource under seas. So it's one of the most talked about internet threats is it is a virus. Viruses usually attack themselves, you know, on convert uh, to downloads as they are designed to spread, you know, at an alarming rate. So they are attached to the files for downloads via, you know, CDs, DVDs, USBs or loaded by the onto the computers by opening an infected mail attachment. So you should be very careful with such threats. And then you have worms that is, you know, they make their way to the computer with the help of email attachment or USB stick. Once they are into the computer, they get in, infect the computer completely, which will not only, sorry, which will not only, uh, you know, uh, definitely does not appears to be harmless. But once you're logged in, you, your system is infected. The next is you called this as phishing. That is, it's the simplest term. Phishing is a form of fraudulent activity. Uh, more often than not, official looking emails are, uh, you know, they are sent by some well-known provider or a bank and these emails acquire the people's password and credit card details. So you have to be very, very careful. Next is a spyware. So when we talk about spyware, so spyware basically is a form of malware is, uh, I mean, it's a malware. So it is an uh, once you install the same in the computer, you can monitor the keystrokes or you can read or delete the files. You can format the computer or the hard disk or a hard drive. And whoever is controlling the spyware has an access to even, you know, the personal details without the person knowing about it. Okay. Now, next is um, key loggers. So similar to the part of spyware, key loggers record a user a keyboard action. Most key loggers will be looking for, you know, uh, details such as your bank credit card or, you know, the passwords or all this cr very crucial details. So it is basically it's a theft or robbing uh, with respect to, you know, uh, people's ideas, inventions and creati creative, that, sorry, uh, creative expressions. It's a form of, you know, it's a, it is linked or identified to intellectual property right. The next is this farming. Uh, it's a com complex version of uh, phishing, okay? Uh, wherein the farmers often create a web pages. So you, in case if you're directed to the web pages in the form of online banking, the user can get your credential details and there can be a fraud. So rock security software. So this is basically uh, uh, downloading an antivirus or anti spy program, uh, which you have purchased, but um, the security software often asks you to pay extra for the protection. That is again a huge con. You should be aware of this. The security software is completely useless and the criminals have robbed, you know, your, your hard earned money. So it's like that. Okay. Sniffing is when the process which all the data pack, packets passing into the network are monitored. So sniffers can be hardware or software installed in the system. Swoofing is the process where an intruder introduces fake traffic and pretends to be someone else. Like, for example, an email which is sent from a uh, sender address that asks the sensitive data. So you should be aware of all these threats, you know, or the form of threats, which can definitely, you know, affect your system, uh, including your credential details also. Now, what is an antivirus? So it is nothing but a software. It's a class of program that searches the hard drive and profit disks for any potential viruses. So antiviruses runs, you know, programs runs in the random access memory of a computer, which can be of uh, basically uh, two different techniques can be used. Examine the files to look whether they have the viruses or not, or identifying the suspicious behavior of any of the program. So most commercial antivirus software uses both these approaches which emphasizes on the virus dictionary approach. So antivirus is an answer for your virus. So virus and worms, if you, uh, if you want to know the difference, so virus is attached it, it, itself to the executable, executable files and transfer from one system to another. Whereas worm is nothing but a malicious program that repeat, replicates itself and can spread to the computer via network. 
uh, yes, in virus, human action is needed, whereas in worms, it's not needed. Speed of spreading is slow, whereas in worms, it is faster. Requirement of a host is needed for spreading, whereas in worms, it is not needed. Removing malware uh, is in the form of antivirus and formatting, whereas, you know, virus tools, uh, removal tool or formatting can be the uh, impact for worms also. Protect the system using antivirus software or your, you can use antivirus or firewall. So consequences that your files may get corrupted and either it will be erased. It consumes the system sources and slows down and can hold the system completely. So that, that is the difference between virus and worms. Now, coming to the next part is, yes, uh, uh, yes, a little bit of digital initiatives, a quick look at digital initiatives fastly. So E with one, as I said, it is nothing but a database of the scientists and researchers of leading institutions, which started in the year 1999. Coming to the next is E Acharya. It's nothing but the E content portal, which is developed by National Mission for Education through ICT, which provides, you know, or browses all the learning material, including audio, video, textual materials, etc. Uh, the portal covers quality learning resources, uh, which started in the year 2006, 30th October 2006, creating digital learning environment for design that is called as eKalpa. Okay, uh, again, and mission by the National Mission uh, in Education through ICT uh, started in the year 2002. The Ministry of Human Resource Development sponsors eYantra. Okay, basically, it is. Uh, uh, the initiative seeks to provide hands-on learning infrastructure to the engineering students who have limited access to the labs and mentors, which was started in the year 2009. Okay, e e kalpa, or it was, you know, e vidwan or e acharya. The next one you have is uh, my government. This is an basically an app types of system. It is an uh, engagement platform which is launched by Government of India in 2014 to promote the participation of the citizens uh, for the development of governance. So it is basically a common platform for the citizens to crowdsource governance ideas from citizens. So Beam, that is nothing but, you know, it is a mobile payment app, uh, basically, which is developed, you know, by the National Payment Corporation of India. Uh, to facilitate e-payment directly through banks, you know, and, and encourage the cashless, cashless transactions. The next one, which you have is Unified Mobile Application, which is a new age governance uh, mobile app, a digital India initiative. So the app supports 13 Indian languages and it's available for Android, iOS or Windows. Uh, Windows. So it is basically a governance mobile app. And PhonePay, it's a digital payment uh, Indian Digital Payment and Financial Services, uh, which has launched in year 2015 uh, in Bangalore. Okay, that is called as Phone Pay. Then yes, uh, you may get uh, the sums on the decimal to binary conversion. So if you have to convert, you know, uh, three by ten uh, to binary. So if you thirteen, sorry, not three. So I have solved over here. So thirteen. Uh, def definitely it is binary, you know, so the base is 2. So 13 with the base 2, 2 6 are. So if you see 2 6 are is 12. So what is 1 is the reminder, 1 goes over here. 2 3 are is 6, there is no reminder, so there is 0 over here. 2 1 are 2, so again there is a reminder, it is 1. So we will start from bottom to top, that is 1, 1, 0, 1 is your answer. Same way if you go with 65, so that is decimal now, okay? So decimal, no? So decimal uh, to octal. So what you have to transfer to octal? So the base of octal is 8. So 8, 8 is 64, 1 is the balance. 8, 1 is 8, there is no balance, so 0. So 1, 0, 1. Okay, if it is decimal to hexa, so the base is 16. So 16, 16 is 256, 0, 16, 1 is 16. So 1, 0, 0 is to the power of 16 is the answer so you should know conversion from what to want by basically they give from primary a decimal to binary only but anything can happen then binary to decimal conversion so if you can see the number as one zero one one zero power to the power of two so it is okay so how we split this number one zero one one zero so this is two to the power of zero two to the power of one 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of, uh, okay. Now 2, uh, please remember 2 to the power of 3. 
okay zero to the power of 3 but calculating we have to be very careful and 2 to the power of 4 okay so uh, 1 into 2 is 2 to, so 2 to the power of 4 is 16 0 into 2 is 0 so 0 to the power of 3 will be 0 1 into 2 is 2 to, but 2 to the power of 2 will be 4 1 into 2 is 2, 2 to the power of 1 will be 2. Same way, 0 into 2 is 0 and 2, 2 to the power of 0 is 0. That's the reason we have over here 0. Anything multiplied by 0 will 0. Let's, that's what we have learned, the basic mathematics. So if you add this all, 16 plus 4 plus 2, the answer comes as 22. Then, yes, then there's a question on hardware and software also. So hardware, as we have seen, CPU, monitor, keyboard, uh, mouse, printer, okay uh, a software in the form of you know uh, the documents in the form of a ppt uh, google chrome or you can talk gmail or you know word document ppt uh, powerpoint presentation windows these are all what software then yes uh, if you see hardware as i have given in different form cpu mouse printer system software that is your operating system or utilities and application software in the form of games spreadsheet that is excel word database and internet browsers then yes there is something called as multi processing and multi programming also now what is this multi processing so it refers to you know multiple process at the at the same time by the cpu multi programming is you know programs uh, keep several programs in main memory at the same time and execute them concurrently so uh, multi processing it utilizes multiple cpu it utilizes single cpu they are parallel processing they context the switching you know switching takes place for multi programming it takes less time uh, multi programming takes more time multi processing facilitates efficient utilization while well as programming less efficient uh, utilization uh, multi processing is usually more expensive whereas multi multi -proce programming is less expensive then yes the computer language which you have i think yes so we'll first see the slide and then we'll come again back to the slide so computer language is low level language divided into two that is high level and low level so low level language is machine language and assembly language whereas high level we have a general purpose or a special purpose language that is in the form of complier or a interpreter so in complier you have a gol fortran cobol all the languages interpreter is like basic apl pascal okay these are the languages so now let's see uh, the translator uh, used the program used in assembly language is called as assembler there are three types of translator that is assembler compilers and interpreter we are going to see compilers and interpreters separately so assembler is a program Uh, which is used to translate the written program in assembly language that is into in assembly language into machine language so assembler is a program that takes basic computer instructions and convert them into the pattern of bits that the computer can process with the help of the basic operation some people call this instructions as assembler language and they use the term assembly language so the basically assembly language is nothing but you know the instructions which are converted into bits at the same time we will also see um, compiler and interpreter so compiler translates the compiler program in single line at a time whereas interpreter is you know program line by line uh, it is faster it is slower because it goes line by line it consume compiler consumes less time because at one at one go it happens interpreter consumes more time because it has to go line by line compiler is more efficient interpreter is less efficient uh when talk about compiler they are larger in size whereas interpreter are smaller so if you can look at this diagram okay so lower level language is only machines can understand interpreter can translate high level language into low or vice versa and high level language only humans can understand then coming to uh, there was a topic called as mode of communication channel in the form of ict so let's see this what are these modes they are called as simple half duplex and full duplex so when i say simple it is unidirection one direction when i say half it is two way when i say full it is two way but simultaneously here in half way it happens one at a time but if you want to happen it make it happen at a time so you can use what you can use a full duplex then we have uh, simplex uh, sorry simplex mode is sender can send the data but sender can't receive the data in duplex they can send uh, sender can send and also can receive the data but one at a time 
whereas in duplex it is continuously it is simultaneously will happen in simplex mode uh, provides less performance than uh, half duplex and full duplex performance wise it is less compared to full so the best performance is from full duplex okay example is keyboard and monitor when it comes to simple half duplex is walkie talkies and when it is full duplex it is your telephone okay at a time which can simultaneously which happens at a time so simple duplex if you can see only one side uh, full duplex at a time one but uh, half duplex uh, sorry full duplex it can happen parallelly and half duplex it is at a time okay single time uh then we have yes catch memory we have started but let's see the sequence also quickly so the increasing order goes with magnetic tapes uh, tapes dicks main memory catch memory and register memory so magnetic tapes and magnetic dicks are a form of auxiliary memory whereas main memory is a form of primary memory secondary memory is also called as auxiliary memory or it is called as external memory so catch is a type of fastest uh, relatively small memory that is stored in the computer it is shortened to catch it is classed as random access memory which a computer microprocessors can access quickly compared to the what compared to the ram so the increasing order access to the time ratio so how it goes is that okay so you have a full diagrammatic presentation over here cpu registers catch memory main memory magnetic disks optical disks magnetic tape so these are the external memories okay these are the internal memories speed increases as we move up so the fastest is cpu register and the slow one is magnetic tape so you should remember which are internal cpu that is ccm are your internal cpu catch main and your mom is your external that is magnetic optical and magnetic uh, disk tape and optical okay now how is your url divided it is divided into protocol path okay and this is your domain three types that is protocol domain and your path okay so yes <clears throat> you have the again one topic with respect to voice line voice uh, net and voice protocol so what is this voice line it is a low cost you know phone service that is alternative to traditional phone line with a telephone broadband connection and telephone adapter which allows to make and receive the call and at home or anywhere in the world voice net it means equipment associated with you know uh, feature accessories in the form of lining cabling uh, controller and voice voice portal portals is the voice equip, equivalent of web portals giving access to the information through you know spoken words and commands or responses uh yes so this i have repeated i think it is again came up binary as i said base of 2 that is 0 and 1 decimal 10 that is from numbers digit 0 to 9 hexa that is from 0 to 9 and alphabet a to f octal that is 0 to 7 in the with a base of 8 okay this is very very important for you so yes that's all for the day with uh, respect to ict now we have two more units that is you know uh one is the people and environment where important unit and ed higher education which i'll be simultaneously taking on but as i said that this revision see it is you have taken really lot of efforts to study for so many months but unless and until you do not do revision now you you may have uh, this amount of pressure that how do we revise so many things in a span of one day or two days that's the reason we are making this video so that you know you can quickly revise you can just look sit at once revise it and at least you are assured that you have taken a revision of each unit and you are going for the examination so that thank you very much say stay tuned do not forget to subscribe our channel ensure that all the notification important notifications are going to come and definitely you will be getting all the details so we'll keep on supporting you just ensure that you are working hard and ensuring to crack your examination thank you everyone